oh man, where do I begin? Operation Raccoon City was a flop, mainly due to the practices behind it and having a mediocre story. I for one really enjoyed it, despite all its flaws. I mean, comparing this game to let's say Resident Evil Core or Resident Evil Resistant, basically anything online, the premise, the idea, they're all shit. I'm not saying that this game should be on the same league as Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil 2 or Resident Evil 2 Remake because it shouldn't, but it's damn well isn't on the level as Resident Evil Survivor, Resistance or Umbrella Core, so why did this game not do so well? The short answer is online because not everything will last, unless you're COD or GTA. I'm mainly speaking for consoles, so I'm not talking about the MMORPG nonsense. I'm really sure that no one even asked for a Resident Evil Online, I mean it's not the first, look at Resident Evil Arby that came out for the PlayStation 2. No one has played it or even talks about it apart from certain Ari streamers. But like now Resident Evil has reached its 30th anniversary and to celebrate that, Capcom has released a new online game called Ari Verse. But why? Just remake Code Veronica that everyone's asking about and then later on Ari 4. But back to Operation Raccoon City. Well, Capcom. They were the publisher behind the game but wasn't the developers. The devs were Slant 6 Games who are known for making SOCOM titles for the PSP and PlayStation 3. Capcom approached them and wanted Slant 6 to make a game similar to SOCOM, though the development staff wanted to make a game similar to older Resident Evil title. Unfortunately, that wasn't the negotiation price. In late 2010, Kotaku, a gaming blog, spread a rumour that Slant 6 game were making a Resident Evil game called Resident Evil Raccoon City. The developers responded by saying they did working on a new amazing project yet to be announced and having a new publishing partner that are well established with huge franchise. Then in March 2011, it was confirmed showing the concept art for the USS character and Capcom producer Masachika Kawata said that the game was 45% done. Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City came out in between March and July 2012 for the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 and PC. The game sold really well, selling around 2 million copies. For a game like this, it's a miracle. The reception for this game were poor. Many people didn't like it for the story, graphics and AI. On the other hand, the online part was well received and that's what happens when you outsource the IP Capcom and I myself really enjoyed Operation Raccoon City soundtrack. This was a time where Capcom had been a bunch of cunts doing shitty practices. Like example Street Fighter Cross Tekken, having the locked characters on the disc then having you to pay for all of them. Or Marvel vs Capcom 3, releasing the vanilla version, then 7 months later releasing the ultimate version with 12 new characters and updated gameplay. Like could they just waited to release it all in one disc? And honestly there's probably more. Oh yeah, I saw it was rough with that DLC bullshit and Street Fighter, you know constantly getting the same shit over and over again with new characters. But I guess that's accepted by the mass fighting game community. And going back to Operation Raccoon City, it was no different. As you can see, when the game came out, it was unfinished. In a sense, of the content were missing. What content? Well, half the game scenario was missing, locked behind DLC, which was fucked up to say the least. When you played the game, you only experienced the USS storyline, which stands for Umbrella Secret Service. And that in of itself is like one hour long to complete. The game is short with or without the DLC. It's more like two hours to complete the whole story. And that's a shame. I remember being excited because the marketing for the game was a what if scenario. What if Umbrella won and kept it all a secret, killing your favourite Ari cast. I'm going through the events of Ari 2 and 3 and seeing different locations from those games. But it fell flat on his ass. The graphics looks awful. None of the main RE cast look anything remotely like they should and the in-game graphics everyone looks dead. The CG cutscene looked decent enough where I'm like okay because you see Nemesis for the first time in his quality and Mr X not counting the Unreal Resident Evil shooters from Nintendo Wii. The other cast look decent as well. I guess. I think that the developers needed more time to at least make it decent but like I said I like this game a lot more than other Ari Online style game because, I don't know, it felt fresh and new at that time. When you buy the game, the first DLC mission is free until 11th of November 2012, but later on it became free. However, the remaining missions were not. And make the matters worse, the DLC was split into two parts. So the first DLC, it was like mission 2 to 4, then mission 5 to 7, you know, trying to milk it out of everyone. I never played the second scenario except for the free first mission, and it was painful too. I spent like £20 on the mission, plus all the weapons because why not? might as well. Then something caught my eye, or rather my brain was like, let's check Osora's Wrath DLC, because like I said in my review, the last mission were taken off PS Store, or that's what I thought, because I remember watching Maximilian video of the hype and rage, or I think it was the boss rage. Anyways, he said he can't get the final mission DLC anymore, and I took it at face value, because in the main menu of Osora's Wrath, when you click the downloadable content, the final mission isn't there. Only the lost episode of Ryu and Akuma, as well as the anime episode, so I was sad because I won't experience them myself, but when I was buying the DLC for Operation Raccoon City, it dawned on me to check if it's actually true, and behold, you have to go to the PS store directly and type in Asura Wrath with the weird alphabetical scroll thing that takes too long to type the name. So after an eternity scrolling, I checked the DLC for Asura's Wrath and it was there, the last episode, the true ending to Asura's Wrath. So why the fuck isn't that in the downloadable 
the content of the screen menu, it would have been a lot more convenient, but no, buy the anime instead that no one wants to see. So I spent around £10 and a total of £30 for Asura's Wrath and Operation Raccoon City. I hope it was worth it. I'm still surprised that Capcom weren't even around after all that bullshit, messing up with nearly all of their IP. It was criminal. So let's go into Operation Raccoon City what if story to see if it's any good or bad. Ugh. I'm not looking forward to it. Let's start with what comes with the game. The Umbrella Secret Service Delta Team Wolfpack story. That's a mouthful. The game is short so I'll explain the story level by level. When you start a mission you can pick any characters you want. It doesn't change the story around you, it just changes the dialogue of different characters in which I elaborate further on. First mission introduces you to Hunk, leader of the Alpha team, silently killing the Spec Ops soldiers, opening the doors for the Wolf Pack to introduce themselves. The objective for this mission is to collect a G-Virus sample from Birkin, getting your orders from Command with his terrible British accent. Understood. Now find Birkin and secure those samples. So onwards to the Birkin lab. Hunk obtains a sample killing Birkin, while Wolfpack have to fight off Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service, or UBCS for short, killing your own guys. The reason being that the loyalties can be bought like a mercenary, so getting the sample, they realise that Birkin survived by ejecting himself with the G-Virus sample and is on a rampage. After escaping the masturbation slam pipe, Hunk stays behind to try to get a sample. Like seeing this, I highly doubt it'll happen, and Hunk dies. Second mission, the outbreak has begun in Raccoon City, People are dying, turning, betraying. The T-Virus is a culprit for this outbreak. Funny enough, it was Umbrella fault for causing this while trying to obtain the G-Virus sample. Delta team objective is to go to City Hall and destroy the evidence relating to Umbrella, destroying servers and blueprints. The team meets with UBCS mercenary Nikolai Genovev. When destroying the server, the team learned that he betrayed his own team, feeding them to the zombies. And surprise, he's a traitor. But then again, you're killing them. So it's like, whatever. Third mission, after destroying the evidence, it's now time to kill civilians. Not directly because that'll take too long. The main objective is to cut out communications by destroying the power grid, stopping anything that might get leaked to the masses. A supply chopper is headed to the hospital helipad, carrying EMP for the mission, so that's where you need to go. And also Nikolai has set traps all over the hospital, making it harder and tedious. After all that headache, and cleaning the helipad roof of crimson heads and zombies, the landing should be clear, but this is Resident Evil, no helicopter survives. Right Mike? Make sure you're the next to go, Sadler. He knew a good bar. Nikolai shoots the pilot, causing the helicopter to spiral and crash and blow up, while Nikolai turns his back from the explosion. Not only that, he blows up the hospital as well. He is unstoppable. More menacing than RE3 remake, that's for sure. So getting out of the inferno, the other team needs to find the EMP that is scattered throughout the cemetery. In total, there's three. One in the north, the other in the east. And let me guess. You got the last one. Which pretty much means we're on a tight leash. Nikolai is hiding inside the church window, peeking his head out to snipe you. After getting a couple of good shots, he retreats without you having to kill him. This is a missed opportunity in the what if scenario. And you get the third EMP, and you hear Moonlight Sonata, a cool easter egg. The team gets to a generator room, destroying three generator and the power is gone for Raccoon City, leaving Citizen to fight in the dark, nightmarish hell. Fourth mission, since the power is out, Umbrella thought it was a perfect plan to release some B.O.W's out in the wild. Not only that, Nemesis is on a rampage and is out of control for Umbrella, so Delta team objective is to reprogram him by obtaining the N.E. Alpha Parasite, which is in Umbrella's laboratory. You find a big ass syringe gun, find the Sleeping Beauty, inject the parasite out of it, then escape from the pissed off Tyrant to the location where Nemesis is and fight it. Delta team weakens him after a grueling battle, injecting the Nemesis with the parasite and is now back in control, hunting down the remaining STARS members. Fifth mission, Command needs to team to go to the Raccoon City Police Department to destroy the evidence linking Umbrella to the sick and twisted Chief Irons. Once that is done, extraction was promised. However, the events from Resident Evil 2 begins when Leon and Claire are attacked by the zombie inside the police car and they both have to split up. Now the new objective is to chase down Leon and kill him, but a swarm of liquor stopped that and Delta team loses him. Management being all pissy about it abandons the squad to fend for themselves. Well, first of all, your crappy sample voice is annoying. Virus samples. 
and second of all, Umbrella unleashes BOW hunters to the city and Delta team had to fight through the Spec Ops soldiers in order to get to the safe house, not before killing two tyrants for safe measure. Inside the safe house, the team are uneasy that command has left them to their own demise. When they're trying to make contact, no one replied. Sixth mission. Delta team tries to contact command falling on deaf ears. They kill everything in the site and after surviving for 10 hours, management is impressed. So they offer a deal for extraction, but first they need to go back to Birkin Lab and find the spy and kill them. And that spy happens to be Ada Wong. Watching the surveillance camera, Leon kills a tyrant and Ada dies, kissing Leon. A self-destruct sequence has activated and Delta team need to get the hell out of there. Umbrella command are pretty much getting annoying at this stage, blaming everything but themselves for the odd shot coming. Anyways, riding the lift up top, the tyrant evolves into a super tyrant and Delta team needs to get him off to escape and Leon is now the top priority to kill. 7th mission is to find Leon, Claire and Sherry. Since Sherry has the virus antigen in her, Umbrella wants her for testing and some other stuff and it's basically either saving them or having a choice to kill them. Your team will split up if you choose either one, making you have to kill them. I like it how Leon is able to convince two other members to join him by saying a few words. Why are you doing this? For Umbrella? Money? <coughs> What's in it for you, huh? If you die during this, you'll see the cutscene again and it's unskippable. Leon has a shit ton of health, as well as packing a serious punch. He can kill you easily with 3 shots. Saving him however is much easier. I just hid behind the pillar and slowly kept shooting at him. The pistol was a massive help. This event takes place at the end of Resident Evil 2. Most of this campaign is Resident Evil 2. Umbrella Command were a bunch of dicks. I would have saved them anyways. I just can't kill my boy Leon and my girl Claire. Even though you don't kill Claire yourself. That happens when he fades to black when he kills Leon and abducts Sherry. I think playing this game throughout multiple times. This is like my second time killing him. On the other hand, when he decided to save them and kill the other Delta team members, the remaining survivors tried to negotiate their deal to Umbrella by tripling their pay and finally asking for extraction. Umbrella doesn't listen so the remaining Delta team cancelled their contract and lets Sherry, Leon and Claire go. Their new objective? destroying Umbrella inside out. The story in the main game got here because there really isn't much option to change events. You just go to the chronological order of things that happened and just be there. The only thing you can change is just by killing Leon, that's it. So this what if scenario is a lie because he can't do much. I like playing as Umbrella characters for what little short time you have. So now it's time for the DLC story, the other what if scenario. And I'll just say that it's different. It doesn't add anything new, but it should have been in the main game when you bought it. So the other scenario, you don't play as the USS soldiers, instead you play as the spec op soldiers, the good guys trying to save everyone. The first mission, nobody knows what the hell is going on or what caused this outbreak. So the objective is to find out what happened. Fighting the Umbrella soldiers, Echo 6 needs to send a signal for reinforcement by switching on the lights, but that doesn't work. So the next option is to use a flare and hold out against the Crimson Head. Soon after, Echo 6 heads to the police station in where Jill Valentine is running away from Nemesis. They both escape from Nemesis and Jill advises them to check City Hall for information about Umbrella. Then Nemesis appears again and he need to protect the Spec Ops team against Umbrella soldiers on the roof with no mobility. The second fight, Nemesis has his minigun and he fight around the gas station defeating Nemesis. Second mission, the objective, investigate City Hall. Echo 6 sets a few barricades to stop zombies from spawning. Carlos is fending off zombies in which the team has to protect him. For some reason the voice dialogue didn't work when Carlos was talking. So I restarted the game to see if it happened again. Oh that's freaking fantastic. It happened again. Well so far this DLC is going great. Apparently Umbrella has set bombs inside City Hall, no thanks to Carlos here, and Echo 6 needs to defuse them all, which is easier said than done. After defusing the bombs inside the record room, Umbrella squads are burning down the building, destroying the evidence. After stopping them the team finds a blueprint to Umbrella's secret facility. Third mission. The objective is to locate this facility, which is in a cemetery. You see Nemesis on the top of the clock tower with a rocket launcher, firing at the heli, destroying it. Carlos defeats Nemesis while Jill is infected and unconscious. Echo 6 then has to fight Nemesis with the rocket launcher. Wow, again another issue. Ugh. I just had a black screen. It didn't freeze the game as I can still hear the audio and I can back up the PlayStation 3 home menu. But for some reason, it didn't load to the next part. I mean, luckily when I restarted, it worked. So yeah, 
So far I'm loving this DLC. The fight isn't really a fight, you have to run away from Nemesis using his rockets to open the locked gates and open a path through the sewers in where the facility is located. At the foundry is where you finally fight Nemesis. You need to draw him under the crucible thing and draw molten iron onto him about 3 times. The first time he drops his rocket launcher and after the third time he falls asleep. Nemi Dissa stars a little decent compared to the Umbrella Secret Service storyline. <laughs> Fourth mission, there's no objective, you just explore the sewers in the dark. There's a flare to use to lighten the area. Echo 6 encounters G Birkin, killing the Umbrella soldiers, and then meets with Claire who's looking for Sherry, and the team escorts her to finding Sherry, but Birkin intercepts and oh my god, Claire just got fucking destroyed. Echo 6 finds Sherry by herself, crying alone, and you need to guide her in the dark using flare on the other side while killing zombies. One grab and it's over. Not really. Hunter swarms the place with a new variant. The Red Hunter. It isn't much different from the green one. Killing all of those, the team has to escort Sherry very slowly and kill a shitload of zombies. Claire takes Sherry with her to safety while Echo 6 fight against G Birkin. They incinerate him, which makes Birkin furious as he slams the ground, breaking it and falling to his demise. Fifth mission Echo 6 is inside Umbrella Facility and is dark. The team finds the facility's schematics and find that the T virus started the outbreak and they need a sample from the G virus from the programming lab. Inside there, tourists are everywhere that need disabling to move forward. Then the team finds a tyrant being programmed to stalk Sherry. Destroying the equipment, the tyrant comes alive. The best way to kill it is to activate the self destruct sequence from three terminals. After that, the team escapes and the tyrant is being attacked by a spider parasite, fusing it to become a spider tyrant. Sixth mission. Echo 6 need to destroy Umbrella Operation Base inside a place called Dead Factory, killing all the forces along the way to the factory. Inside, one of the USS soldier member Four Eyes, who you don't see, deploys a shit ton of BOWs that are tyrants. Thank god Command has sent in a railgun to help, killing the normal ones and the super tyrant. 7th mission. Leon sends a distress signal and Echo 6 objective is to locate Leon, Claire and Sherry for extraction. The first part, the team protects the gang from Umbrella forces so that they can escape. Then the final boss of the DLC appears, the Spider Tyrant, looking quite different than before. The fight is easy, not much else to say. You see a weak spot, shoot them and dodge the attacks. Sometimes it burrows itself underground and attacks. The Spider Tyrant has a lot of health so it'll take quite some time or if you got the right weapons, then it'll take a few seconds. After that, the creature is killed. Leon, Claire and Sherry leave via the helicopter and they all have their different objectives. Leon is gonna expose Umbrella, Claire is gonna look for her brother Chris and Sherry is under the care of Spec Ops. Echo 6 team stays behind as Command tells them to look for new threats. Well, given the fact that the city is going to be nuked, nice knowing you. The story takes place during Resident Evil 3, you're getting to see most of the cast of the game, but then again you can't do anything to change the story, it's the same. Like Leon is going to do the same thing as he did in Resident Evil 2 ending, same with Claire. So where's the what if scenario part in the DLC? It shouldn't even have been separated from the main game. You don't encounter Delta Team physically and the game is short. I had a few issues with the DLC, having no audio and a black screen, uh, whatever. Time to talk about the gameplay of Operation Raccoon City. The gameplay foundation is like it was meant to be played online. Even selecting a mission where you pick your character, you have to wait 5 seconds like it's some team deathmatch. And the game overall is best played with someone else. Fortunately, this is a horror Resident Evil game that is not known for multiplayer, unlike COD or Battlefield. So the main core of the game is shooting, obviously, whether it's shooting zombies, umbrella forces or spec ops. You can take cover behind any walls by simply going up to them. You can run to escape hordes of zombies when you're overwhelmed. And you can jump dive for safe measure. If you don't want to shoot for some reason, then CQC is your next best option for zombies. Don't try it on soldiers unless they're super weak or else they'll do it to you, making you look stupid. Anyway, the standard knife attack is weak, leaving you vulnerable. When you attack, press either circle or triangle, your character will do a cool one-shot takedown. The weapon in this game varies from pistol, machine gun to rocket launcher. I remember when going for the platinum for this game is that the heavy machine gun has the best overall stats for everything. It's powerful and has lots of ammo. While having a poor range, that's where the pistol comes in. At times it does feel like your shots are going through zombies, even though your reticle is aimed right at them. If by any chance you run out of ammo for your main weapon, you can switch to your pistol by pressing L2 which quickly snaps to an enemy and you can quickly shoot whoever's around you. It's also a good substitute for reloading, but when the camera pans out and you quick shotting every enemy, it looks really cool. But yeah, going for S plus rank on professional was a nightmare, especially fighting Nemesis because not only do you have to fight him, but you have to fight the soldiers and the zombies at the same time. 
And speaking of zombies, they're very unique. Well, first they can grab onto you and bite you, or just grab you and throw you into another hard, which is frustrating. When you get bitten, most likely you're gonna get infected, which is a bad thing, as your health is slowly going down and your movement is slow. You need to find antivirus vaccine around the level, but when you're in the moment, trying to find one is like trying to find health spray, very unlikely. And when soldiers shoot at you, depending on the weapon, they can make you bleed which attracts zombies to you. Normal ones are fine, but the crimson head, Jesus, you might as well just die. The zombies spit green goo at the screen, giving you little vision to see. It's not that bad as it doesn't stop you from shooting. When your team members are dead, you can revive them. However, they can't do the same to you. Like when you're infected and you die, you turn into a zombie that is out of your control. You just see a character running around attacking your own teammates. I think in multiplayer you can't get revived, but in single player that's not happening. Now time to talk about stupid deaths. When I was on low health and I saw a green herb, I ran for my life. The closer I got, the more I was like it's mine to smoke. Then all of a sudden, bam, I got crushed by a BOW capsule. What the crap? The boss fight is very scripted. When you get them to a low amount of health, they just move to a location and stand there waiting for you to do something. If you don't, then they just move out of the way and you have to weaken them again. The fight I remember doing that was a tyrant on the elevator. Nemesis fight is fun on low difficulty. I just like the design and the very nature of Nemesis. He's cool. A lot of people don't like how he pronounces stars. I mean, it's not good. It sounds western, like someone just phoned it in. Stars. In the DLC, he does says a tiny bit better, but it's not like it's better than Resident Evil 3, because that's the first time you hear monsters speak like that for the first time, which is scary in of itself. And he can handle a freaking minigun and a rocket launcher, a perfect package. Your standard BOWs are here, from liquors, hunter, and zombie dogs. You find data scattered everywhere in the levels, collected them will give you XP. Depending on how many you can get, you can redeem your points to upgrade your ability, or get concept art. You can get more experience points by playing online. When you finish a mission, you get evaluated on how well you did. Like on every difficulty, you have targets that you need to achieve to get an S rank. For example, getting a number amount of kills, getting the least amount of death, how many items you collected, or how long it took for you to clear the mission. For me, the toughest part was clearing the mission, because not only do you have to waste time killing zombies or whatever, you also have to scrounge around looking for data to collect. And not only that, on high difficulty, everyone is a bullet sponge. I know I'm always repeating myself, but the Nemesis fight was the toughest one to get an S rank, or should I say an S rank plus. And with enough trial and error, I eventually achieved an S rank plus. With the DLC, however, I'm not going to be bothered because you don't get a trophy for any of those. The team I've chosen to get an S rank plus were Lupo, because she's an excellent buff character, Bertha, because she can heal you, Spectre, because she has an ability to see everything on the minimap, and can point out where the data are hidden. As for the fourth one, I don't remember who it was, but I'm just gonna say it was Four Eyes because she can heal you with the vaccine if you're infected. Now it's time to talk about the characters from each side. My favourite would be the Delta team because they all look unique and different, while the Spec Ops soldiers just look generic. You know what, now that I think about it, one of them is taking the virus outbreak very seriously by wearing a mask, while the other one isn't. Now what does that remind you of? First team to talk about is Delta Team Wolfpack. All of them have ability that can be upgraded, level 3 being the highest. So starting with my favourite character out of the bunch for his cool design, Vector. His backstory or lore is that nothing is known about him. He trained at Rockford Island, which is a place that Claire visits in Code Veronica, and developed lethal martial arts skills and elite skills for reconnaissance. His achievements are matched by his former master, Hunk. His specialty is recon and his active abilities are active camouflage, making you invisible and can't be seen. Some BOW can smell you out. Mimicry is copying other appearance and motion detector can display enemies on the minimap within 15 meters when thrown onto any surface. His Passive ability are stealth run, making less noise, allowing you to run without being seen on the minimap, increasing your movement speed, and detection avoidance allows you to avoid being detected on the minimap while moving at full speed. Sprinting will cause you to appear on the map unless you have stealth run. Overall, a very cool character. Next is the team leader of Wolfpack Delta Team, Lupo. Cool mask. Her backstory is that she's a former French special ops. Her name is Karina Lupo. Les Pru. Perawicks, whatever, let's just call her Les. She likes money, she's good with weapons, and she's trusted by the team as she looks out for them, dubbing her the Wolf Mother. Her specialty is Assault. Overall, she's a buff character. Her active abilities are Super Soldier, which nullifies certain amount of hits, with damage dealt and accuracy being increased. Guns are blazing is like infinite ammo for a certain time, plus accuracy and recall improvements, and incendiary rounds can set enemies on fire. Best suited for infected, and her passive abilities are Body Armor, which reduces damage and quick reload. Next is Bertha. 
Her design is meh. I never really cared much about her. Her backstory is that she finds pleasure in pain. Her real name is Mikaela Schneider. She was unable to live a normal life. So she was eager to join Wolfpack to be a medic, which is her specialty. She's kind of crazy as she views having anesthetic to be a luxury. So if you're injured, best believe it's gonna hurt. Her active abilities are stim pack that increases accuracy of movement speed. You can inject it to your teammates or onto yourself via the hypogun. Neutralized infection can kill infected team as well as yourself, and pain killer reduces the damage dealt to yourself or your teammates. Her passive abilities are first aid proficiency, holding more health sprays than any other, and field medic that allows her to restore more health than usual. She is a must if you're playing online or going for the S rank. Next is Beltway. He looks like a generic brute. His head looks smaller than his body. His background is that he's a demolition expert, discharged from the Army Corps of Engineers for a reason unknown other than his prosthetic leg. His name is Hector Hivers and he just loves blowing shit up. His specialty is demolition if you haven't noticed and his active abilities are Fragmentation Mind which can be thrown on the ground, time sticky explosives that can stick onto any surface and explode after 5 seconds and Laser Trip Mind that can stick onto any surface so you can stick them on the walls, the ceiling and the ground. His passive abilities are Blast Armor which prevents you from getting knocked down and reduces damage from explosives and Blast Master can reduce cool time for any selective active abilities. Next is Spectre. He looks like a chameleon with those goggles. How can he even see with those? Anywho, his backstory is that he's a vet from Cold War, a former spy. His name is Vladimir Bodrovsky. He was moved to European Umbrella and transferred to Wolfpack when management realized that his skill can be of use. His specialty is Surveillance. His active abilities are Threat Scanner that allows you to scan 60 meters around you and any threat will be related to your minimap as well as the team minimap. Biothermal vision allows you to see any soldiers or other living creatures for 60 meters. Sonar vision is the same as previous except you can see through walls and other objects for 60 meters and its passive ability are proximity detection. It can increase the size of the minimap and automatically reveals enemies within 20 meters and item detection allows you to see all items picked up within 20 meters and you can see them on your minimap. And lastly Four Eyes, the beautiful Asian waifu of Delta team whom I never played ever. This is my first time doing so. Her backstory is that she's obsessed with science at a young age. Her name is Christine Yamata. She specializes in virology and doesn't care for anything around her as she's focused on her work disregarding human emotion or lives of others. She always wants to know more about any situation that she's in. Her specialty is field scientist and her active abilities are induced infection that has a 67% chance to affect soldiers and 100% chance to affect a zombie turning it into a crimson head becoming an ally. Attraction pheromone is a vial when thrown can attract zombies on the location the vial landed and program infected you can control infected enemies like hunter it'll last longer on weaker ones and her passive abilities are antiviral proficiency that allows you to carry more antiviral sprays than normal and biometric vision allowing you to see infected 30 meters away you can see the weak points that are distinguished by the colors and there you have it the main characters of the base game overall i like the design that's it I know it's not saying much, but these characters are meant to be expanded on. So next are these DLC characters. Spec Ops Echo 6, all of the characters have the same abilities as Wolfpack. So I'm not going to go through that again. Instead, I'm going to talk about the story and the specialty. Starting with Tweed, a former British Secret Service, disappearing after a bomb removal operation that left her scarred. Her name is Marisa Ronson. She was picked by the government to be in Echo 6 squad as her specialty is demolition. Her abilities are the same as Beltway's. Next is DA, the leader of Echo 6. His name is Crispin Jettingham. He's been a soldier as long as he can remember, always calm and collected, highly skilled with weapons and given out orders. He was a choice of becoming the leader by the government. His specialty is assault and his ability are the same as Lupo. Next is Party Girl. She got her name by throwing out wild parties for businessmen and officials. Whatever dirty deed they did, she recorded and sold them to the highest bidder, which caught the eyes of the government after she duped one of the experts at one of her parties. Her name is Sayina Fowler. Her specialty is surveillance, same as Spectre. Next is the Claire lookalike Willow. She joined the army straight out of high school, excelling as part of special forces, she developed skill for speed and illusion growing up alone in Montana. Never satisfied with herself, she continues to hone her skills. Her name is unknown. Her specialty is recon, same as Vector. Next is Harley, an ex-biker who joined the service to avoid jail time. Named Erez Morris, he was one of the best medic on the battlefield. Always putting other lives before his. His specialty is medic and his ability is the same as Bertha's, although he's quite sane. Next is Shauna. His name is Lawrence Kimbala. Exposed to death at a young age, he began treating diseases of his people in Zimbabwe. After his father's death, he attended Harvard Medical School, in where he had skills for controlling viruses instead of curing them. He joined 
the Army Special Weapon Program, as the expert in virology, his specialty is field scientist and his ability is the same as 4 eyes, although not as waifu material. And that is all of the gameplay, you have either sides to choose to play as, well one's free and the other one isn't. One aspect I didn't touch upon was online, so let's talk about what type of game or matches you'll be playing when you're playing online. First is standard team deathmatch, called team attack, next is biohazard, in which you collect samples, heroes is where you kill a hero while protecting yours, survivor is one on one with zombies trying to escape the heli, and all mode is just cycling through without backing out of the lobby. I don't remember much of multiplayer, other than it being frustrating trying to get the necessary trophies for the platinum. You can play as Doctor Team or Echo 6 Team, as well as heroes like Ada, Leon, Claire, Carlos, Jill, Nikolai, Hunk, and a new character for online, Lone Wolf. For the Xbox 360, Nemesis was a playable character as a hero, which brings a tear to my eye as I would love to play as Nemesis. And lastly the music, I love it. The main menu is catchy and the starting music for Delta Team is really good. Echo 6 however, wasn't that great. But overall I like the soundtrack of the game, it's perfect for setting the mood and playing off the whole Resident Evil atmosphere. I'm not going to elaborate any further because I don't know much about music other than the soundtrack for this game sounding really good. And that's my review of Operation Raccoon City for the PlayStation 3, a really long title, a cool title with a cool premise that just fell flat. I do believe that given enough time that this game single player would have been good, like comparing this to other Resident Evil online games. I much prefer this one over them. I don't hate the game, it's just that I have so much potential to be at least decent. The graphics aren't good except for the CG. The gameplay I enjoyed, while I understand why some people might not like it, but the only thing I have to say about that is get good. I didn't have a problem with the AI as some people mentioned. I mean, I don't even trust my own AI teammates to help me, although they do come in clutch when I'm low on health or infected. I'm just happy that Capcom 2011 is gone because my goodness it was a lot worse i've been anime CXP. thank you so much for watching make sure to comment like share subscribe and hopefully see me in the next video Bye bye